Hey everybody, welcome to EV Buyer's Guide. EV Buyer's Guide is going to be part of the Alex on Autos network. That's why there's some Alex on Autos merch right there behind me. But things are going to be diverging, and this channel is going to be focusing simply on electric vehicles, a little bit of plug-in hybrids now and then, hydrogen electric vehicles, anything that uses a plug or uses electricity to get you down the road. With that out of the way, let's dive into today's topic, Ford F-150 Lightning versus brand new Silverado EV. Probably the most important thing to know about the F-150 Lightning versus the Chevy Silverado EV is that the F-150 Lightning is going to happen first. It should be shipping sometime soon in calendar year 2022. The Silverado EV, on the other hand, that's going to be shipping a year later in 2023 as a 2024 model year truck. As a result of this timeline, there are a decent number of things that we don't know yet about the Chevy Silverado EV, but I have to say that Ford has been a little tight-lipped about some of the specifications on the F-150 Lightning as well. Let's talk about what we know and what we don't know. Diving into power numbers first, the Chevy Silverado EV is going to be the more powerful truck. The base model, which they're calling the work truck trim, that's going to give you 510 horsepower and 615 pound-feet of torque. The top end trim is going to be the RST truck, that is going to give you 664 horsepower and a whopping 780 pound-feet of torque. Things are a little bit less powerful in the F-150 Lightning, but a little bit more torquey for the base model. So 426 horsepower is going to be the base version, 775 pound-feet of torque, but if you get the bigger battery pack, power bumps up to 563 horsepower and still 775 pound-feet. Rolling through the specifications, the towing award should go to the Silverado EV eventually, but there's a little bit of nuance here. On the F-150 Lightning, towing starts at 7,700 pounds when properly equipped with the small battery pack, tops out at 10,000 pounds when properly equipped with the big battery pack. On the Silverado, base towing is going to be 8,000 pounds, Max is going to be 10,000 pounds, but later they claim in a fleet focused model, you'll be able to choose an option for a 20,000 pound towing package. As always, the towing figure has a big caveat, and that is that in many states in the US, 10,000 pounds is the most you can tow unless you have a class A driver's license. So be sure and check your state laws before you try and tow something over 10,000 pounds. Speaking of pounds, payload is going to top out the highest in the F-150 Lightning. 2,000 pounds maximum if you get the small battery pack, 1,800 pounds if you get the bigger battery pack. That's not too much of a surprise because the F-150 lineup has generally higher payload capacities than the Ram pickup truck or the Chevy Silverado pickup truck, the regular non-EV versions, and I expect that's going to continue with the F-150 Lightning. In the Silverado, according to Chevy's release, payload should range between about 1,200 pounds and 1,300 pounds. Now, to be honest, many half-ton trucks out there, especially the upper-end trims, whether we're talking about a Silverado or a Sierra or a Ram or a Tundra, or an F-150, they're going to hover right around 11 to 1500 pounds of total payload if you get a lot of the options that I think most people are going to be interested in. The uh, lower profile tires, all the bells and whistles on the inside, the upper end trims, etc. So it's not too unusual for those options and gadgets and add-ons to the vehicle to reduce your payload down to around that number. So I don't see that as too much of a problem. Now let's talk about where things really split, and that is the battery tech. With the F-150 Lightning, Ford decided to use basically a variant of the Mustang mach E's battery pack. The base version is going to be 98 kilowatt hours, so it really sounds like it's basically the Mustang mach E's battery pack, maybe with some additions or some tweaks. It's very, very close in terms of its capacity. Now, they are saying 98 kilowatt hours is the usable capacity of that pack, so I suspect it has been tweaked a little bit versus what we find in the Mustang to give you that usable capacity increase. The bigger battery pack is going to be 131 kilowatt hours. That's going to make the extended range version of the F-150 Lightning one of the biggest battery packs available for 2022, although it's worth noting that there are a few vehicles out there that now have bigger battery packs. Now when we talk about the Silverado EV, this is going to have a truly huge battery pack in terms of capacity. GM is promising 200 kilowatt hours. This is basically the same Ultium battery pack that we see in the new Hummer EV, whether we're talking about the truck or the SUV there. It's gonna have 200 kilowatt hours usable according to them. And it's going to be an 800 volt architecture, something that we're also seeing in the Korean EVs that are coming out soon, the Porsche EV, and of course the latest Audi EV as well. What does this mean to you? It's all about DC fast charging speeds. As an example, pretend that this microphone cable is a power cord. Say this was rated for 20 amps. That would be 20 amps at 20 volts, 20 amps at 60 volts, 20 amps at 100 volts, 200 volts, etc. But the higher the voltage, the more actual energy you're pushing through this cable. So by going from 400 volts to 800 volts, you could be putting 
twice the power through the same cable for the same current. And that's really the key to fast charge rates. Now, at this point in time, General Motors has not been overly specific about exactly how fast the battery will charge on the Silverado EV. They have said it will support 350 kilowatt charging, but that's also a line that Hyundai has used with the Ionic EV. And in reality, the peak on that vehicle is about 236, 237 kilowatts. They're just saying that it will support the newer 350 kilowatt, 800 volt stations out there. Now that said, it is definitely going to be charging faster than the F-150 Lightning. According to Ford, the F-150 Lightning will take 44 minutes to 41 minutes, depending on the battery pack you choose, to go from 10% to 80%. That's a 70% charge of the battery. Now in the General Motors truck, it will take 40 minutes to go from 10% to 80%. Now I know you're thinking, hang on a minute, that is not that much faster. But remember, the battery pack is a lot bigger in the Silverado EV, so it's actually charging at a rate at least 50% faster than that F-150 Lightning because it's going to stuff 140 kilowatt hours into the battery pack in that 40 minutes versus 92 kilowatt hours in 41 minutes for the F-150. So charging times are definitely going to be a little bit quicker in the Silverado. And with that comes longer range, bigger battery pack, longer range. That's why the Silverado EV is being quoted at an estimated 400 miles of range. The F-150 Lightning, on the other hand, will start at 230 miles of range, go up to 300 miles of range if you get the extended range battery pack. Now, some of you might now be thinking to yourself, how is it you only get an extra 100 miles of range when the battery pack is 70 kilowatt hours larger? That's a pretty big bump in terms of battery capacity. The answer to that is likely going to be weight. The weight of the battery pack in the Silverado EV is going to be much higher. There are some rumors out there that the Hummer EV may be about 9,000 pounds in terms of curb weight. We don't really know exact details just yet on the curb weight, but expect the Silverado to weigh more, therefore be less efficient, cause a little bit more friction drag with the tires on the ground, et cetera. And that's why it takes such a big bump in battery capacity to get you that 33% improvement in range. How about AC level two charging? I think that's gonna be a bit more important for most folks out there because over 90% of charging sessions happen either at the office or at home. Well, here's where things get a little bit unclear because Chevy has not said exactly which charger the Silverado EV will be equipped with. I suspect, however, it's going to be the 19.2 kilowatt charger that we're gonna see in the Hummer EV. All indications point to that direction. And that makes a lot of sense because the F-150 Lightning has your choice of two different chargers. There's an 11.3 kilowatt level two charger on board the vehicle and a 19.2 kilowatt charger on board the vehicle. Remember that when we're talking about EV chargers, the charger is on the electric car itself. That thing that you plug the vehicle into, that's either a charging station, that's a little bit inaccurate really to call it that. It's an EVSE is the more appropriate term. Basically it's a smart extension cord and the car is the one that's actually controlling the charging of the pack. The reason we're seeing these high rate level two chargers on board of the new electric trucks is simply because the batteries are bigger and they're gonna be less efficient than something like a Tesla Model 3 that has a battery pack half the size of the big battery in the F-150 Lightning. It's definitely important to keep in mind those charge rates and those charge times, because for about half the power, you could go the same distance in something like a Model 3 or some of the other really efficient EVs out there. Now let's move on to the styling. On the outside, I have to say, I like the F-150's styling a little bit more. I'm not the biggest fan of the big sort of gray imitation grill up front, but I do like the LED light bar, and I like the fact that it's a little bit squarer. Now on the Silverado side, it's definitely going for a more modern look, and I have to say the Silverado EV is, to me at least, more attractive than the gasoline Silverado. It definitely looks sleeker and more modern. But I think where the Silverado really shines is on the interior. I really, really like the pictures that Chevy released for the Silverado EV's interior. It looks much more modern and much more premium. Now that makes sense because the price tag is gonna be higher. I'll talk about that in a little bit. On the inside, Chevy looks like they're gonna be using their latest infotainment system, something that we're gonna be seeing in a number of other Chevys coming soon. I suspect that infotainment system is gonna be snappier and a little bit easier to use than the one that we find in the F-150 Lightning. In the Lightning, they basically took the big touch screen out of the Mach-E and they jammed it into the dashboard. And the software appears to be the same. I was able to play with this generation of the F-150 Lightning software at a particular event, and it has some of the same sort of slowness 
feel that we have in the Mach-E at times. You stab an option, sometimes it takes a bit for the software to actually respond. There are a few glitches here and there. Now, my early interactions with Chevy's new Android-based operating system in their vehicle indicates that it actually is really, really snappy. So I'm very excited about that one. And I have to say, I just like the styling of the inside of the Silverado a bit more. But we should talk about price tag here because that is important to keep in mind. The Chevy is going to be considerably more expensive in reality. The Ford starting price is going to be 39974 That's going to give you the base work truck version, vinyl seats, vinyl floors, etc. Smaller infotainment screen in the dashboard. The top end platinum trim is going to start at $90,874. And the least expensive way to get the big battery pack in the Ford is going to be 72,474. It's going to give you 300 miles of range. In some news articles, you might have heard that the 300 mile range model is going to be a little bit less expensive than that price tag, but that model is the pro version with the big battery pack and it is only available to fleet customers. So you as the consumer out there shopping for a new electric truck, you're not going to be able to get that one. If you want the 300 mile range Ford, it's going to be at least 72,474. But the Ford is going to qualify for a full $7,500 federal tax credit if you qualify for one. And I suspect most people out there buying a $72,000 truck are going to be just fine on that tax credit. With the Silverado, General Motors has run out of EV tax credits, and its price tag is going to be higher. Starting in spring of calendar year 2023, General Motors is going to release the first Silverado EV. They haven't announced pricing for that model, but it is going to be the work truck version with 510 horsepower and the 400 mile range battery pack. Sometime later in the year, they're saying fall of 2023, the RST first edition is going to start shipping and it is going to start at $105,000. So quite expensive, pretty expensive compared to the F-150 Lightning. It actually appears that that RST first edition is going to be more expensive than the most expensive version of the F-150 Lightning. Pretty much right up there with the Hummer EV in terms of pricing territory. Then at some point later, but no date has been associated with this, there will be a base truck for $39,900 with a smaller battery pack. No details are available on that one. When it comes to cargo hauling, both of these vehicles are going to be very practical. They are both half-ton trucks, so they're not like the Rivian, which is sort of a mid-sized truck. The bed in the Rivian is going to be narrower, meaning you can't put things that are quite as wide into it. If you're the kind of person that wants to be able to carry 4x8 sheet goods of things, you will be able to do that in both of these trucks between the wheel wells, it looks like. Absolutely no problem there, and things that are wider inside the truck bed, but not between the wheel wells. Now, both of these beds are not 8 foot long. The one in the Ford is about five foot six, and the one in the Chevy is just under six feet long. So they are going to be hanging out the back if you want that eight foot sheet good. However, Chevy has a trick up their sleeve. Pulling a page out of the Avalanche's playbook, it has a mid gate. So instead of having that cargo area a complete separate item from the body of the vehicle, you can actually fold down the front of that bed fold down the rear seats and have that cargo item go all the way in there. So you would be able to put eight foot sheet goods from the back of the front seats all the way to the tailgate inside the vehicle. Ford, on the other hand, went pretty traditional and the bed in the F-150 Lightning is basically the same bed that we find in any other F-150. Speaking of practicality, both vehicles are going to offer an integrated onboard AC inverter, basically onboard generators, what most manufacturers are calling this. It's gonna be a little bit heftier in the Silverado, 10.2 kilowatts maximum output versus 9.6 kilowatts optional in the F-150 Lightning. In the F-150, 2.4 kilowatts is standard, 9.6 is optional. It looks like the 10.2 kilowatt inverter is gonna be standard on the Silverado for the moment, but the Silverado is only gonna come in top trims at the beginning. So expect the base trims to get either a smaller inverter or no inverter at all. Whether we're talking about 9.6 or 10.2, this is definitely enough power to run a pretty decently sized RV with air conditioning units, etc., or run the average family home in the event of a power outage, including your oven or your air conditioning if you need to. You should expect to see Chevy release additional details on the new Silverado EV over the coming months and of course the coming year because it's not going to be on sale this year. It's not going to be until next year. So actually a little bit more than a year away from January of 2022. It's also likely that we'll start to see additional details on the upcoming hotly anticipated Ram electric truck, which probably is going to go on sale a little bit after the Silverado EV. Be sure and let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section below. My personal take on this is that I really love the look of the Silverado EV, but I have to say I am a little bit disappointed that like the new GMC Hummer EV, 
it's only going to be sold initially in the really expensive formats. So you're going to either get the absolute stripper truck or you're going to get the really, really fantastically expensive one over $100,000. Now, it is going to offer a lot of content that we don't see in very many trucks these days, like four-corner steering, a four-corner air suspension. Those features are going to be really, really handy. It's going to make the truck really easy to parallel park. And it's also, of course, going to give you an excellent ride, something that's important in a truck that is this heavy but it is going to be more expensive, perhaps a little bit less attainable. And until the rules change, it's not going to qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit. And at least at the beginning, the Ford truck is going to qualify for that tax credit. Until Ford hits their 200,000 units, the tax credit is around. And then even then in that calendar year, there's a general tapering off of the tax credit. So at least foreseeably for 2022, likely for 2023 as well, the tax credit is going to apply to the F-150 Lightning. It also appears, details are sketchy on this one, but it appears at this point in time that Ford is planning on building more F-150 Lightnings. They've promised to really ramp up their production capacity. So it's likely that in 2022 on into 2023 and perhaps even 2024, that the F-150 Lightning is going to be more available than the General Motors electric trucks. But on the other hand, I love the fact that General Motors thought outside the box with the mid-gate, and I really, really love the fact that they went to an 800-volt system. That's going to make charging an awful lot faster. It also results in a few other efficiencies in terms of weight savings, cable size, etc. on board. Big thing, however, is the charging. 800 volts is definitely the direction that most EVs are going. Most manufacturers have pledged to support it at some point. And I'm really glad that Chevy and GMC decided to adopt the 800 volt architecture for their trucks right from the very beginning. Something that I had really hoped that Ford would do with the F-150 Lightning, but it seems like that's going to have to come in some later generation. Again, let me know what you think about all that down there at the bottom of your screen. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, and I'll see all of you later.